our previous simulation work suggests that to overcome turgor pressure, a constrictive force is required for bacteria cell division. Currently, the best candidate for the force generator is the tubulin homelock FTSC, which has a ring line localization at the mid cell. FTSC forms filaments that are connected to the membrane via flexible C terminal linkers. Here we use simulations to explore different mechanistic models of how FTSC might constrict cells. We model the membrane as a sheet of beads originally forming a cylinder, shown here in yellow. The cell wall shown in pink is modeled as a cylindrical grid of beads connected by circumferential glycan and horizontal peptide springs. We model the cell wall as a semi-rigid layer such that as the membrane is pulled in and space is created between the cell wall and the membrane, glycan springs are replaced with shorter springs to prevent the membrane from expanding. We model FTSC filaments as chains of beads shown here in cyan connected by springs and the filaments are connected to the membrane via linkers, shown here as the orange dots, to focus on the mechanism of FTSC constriction. In most of this movie, we visualize the membrane as a surface and don't show the cell wall. We explore two leading models proposed in the literature for how FTSC constricts the cell. In this model, FTSC filaments are thought to overlap to form complete rings and interactions between filaments cause sliding leading to ring constriction. We assume that a long range Leonard Johns interactions between FTSC subunits on different filaments induces lateral contact. Simulations of this model show that this long range interaction quickly pulls the filament together into a multi layer bundle, preventing filament sliding and ring constriction. However, we never observe bundles by electron cryotomography, only ribbons of parallel filaments. We then assume that the cell has separators, shown here as gray spheres, that hold filaments in separate rings to prevent bundling. Simulations of this model show that the ring fails to constrict. At the beginning, some filament sliding occurs, but quickly stops. To analyze the cause, we calculated the interaction energy of two filaments as a function of lateral overlap. We saw the system's energy minimum decreases much faster than the energy maximum as the number of lateral bonds increases, resulting in an increasing energy barrier. Once the barrier is higher than thermal fluctuation energy, the avidity locks up filament sliding. Next, we assume that filament depolymerization can reduce avidity to allow further sliding. In this mechanism, filament depolymerization occurs together with sliding to maintain a short filament overlap and low energy barrier, therefore sustaining filament sliding. Our simulation show that to preserve ring integrity, the rate of depolymerization must be regulated because the sliding rate is limited by the rate of cell wall growth. If depolymerization is too fast, the rings break up. We then slow down the filament depolymerization. With these adjustments, the ring integrity is preserved, allowing deep constriction to occur. Recent findings shows that FTSC filaments treadmill around the cell. We therefore tested whether treadmilling can play a role similar to depolymerization in reducing avidity and sustaining filament sliding. Our simulations show that treadmilling can also enable ring constriction. However, treadmilling leads to bundling of filaments which is not seen in real cells. Analyzing this result, we found that since treadmilling occurs in random directions, three scenarios occur simultaneously in simulations. In scenario 1, if two filaments treadmill away from one another, lateral contact is reduced, allowing further filament sliding and ring constriction. The effect of this scenario is similar to that of depolymerization. In scenario 2, if two filaments treadmill in the same direction, the number of overlapping beads remains constant and no further sliding occurs. In scenario 3, if two filaments treadmill toward one another, the bead overlap is increased. This leads to formation of filament bundles. In summary, our simulation suggests that the filament sliding model requires the following conditions to work. First, an attractive force between the filaments. Second, mechanisms to prevent bundling and stacking. 
third mechanism such as depolymerization or treadmilling to reduce avidity, and fourth, a complete ring of overlapping filaments. Next, we explore the other main model proposed in the literature. In this model, by switching from a straight to a bent conformation, FTAZ filaments exert force on the membrane. We assume the filament bends without twisting. To prevent twisting, we represent each subunit as a cube and the filament as a chain of cubes. To implement filament bending, the relaxed lengths of springs on the C-terminal side and N-terminal side are increased and decreased respectively. To make the visualization clearer, we show the cubes as beads. We assume that by hydrolyzing GDP, the filament switches from straight to bend. We first tested the case in which the filament's preferred curvature is 10 times larger than that of the initial membrane. We found that the filaments failed to constrict the membrane. Instead, they roll over to bend in the plane of the membrane since this is more energetically favorable. Next, we implemented filament treadmilling. However, treadmilling fails to prevent filament rolling and filaments just end up moving in circles. Next, we tested if connecting FTZ filaments to a circumferential glycan strands can constrain the filaments perpendicular to the cell's long axis and therefore prevent rolling. Here, the membrane beads that the linkers intersect are shown in yellow. However, filaments still roll, forming elliptical paths. This is because both the filaments and linkers are flexible. Next, we assume that several proteins that bind FTAZ form rigid linkers, so the linkers remain normal to the membrane surface and prevent filament rolling. Our simulations of this model show that the filaments can now constrict the membrane as they bend and treadmill around. We realize that membrane constriction requires that the filaments preferred curvature is much higher than that of the membrane. However, several studies in the literature suggest that FTSE's preferred curvature might be small. In either case, constriction would stop when the membrane curvature gets close to that of FTSE. To confirm this speculation, we simulated a case where the difference in the filaments preferred curvature and that of the membrane is small at the beginning. Our simulation showed that such a small difference in curvature is not sufficient to cause membrane constriction. We realize that this problem can be solved by reversing the bending direction of FTSZ. Since the filament bends away from the membrane, the difference in curvature can be significant. Simulating this model, we show that a small curvature of FTSZ is sufficient to cause membrane constriction. Previously, it was shown that in dividing cells, sometimes only a single FTAZ filament was visible. We ran simulations with only a single FTAZ filament, assuming a bending model, treadmilling, and rigid linkers, and observed cell constriction. Because turgor pressure expands peptide crosslinks in the cell wall, our previous simulation work suggested that the existing cell wall needs to be constricted to a relaxed state before new hoops can be built in with a smaller size. We therefore explore how a single filament might create such a condition. We speculated that it can cause a local relaxation of the cell wall if the two ends of the filaments are rigidly linked to the cell wall. As the filament bends, the end-to-end -end distance reduces, squeezing the cell wall. In summary, our simulation suggests that the filament bending model requires the following conditions to work. First, a mechanism that causes filament bending, such as GTP hydrolysis. Second, the bending must be kept within the division plane, for instance, by rigid linkers that prevent rolling. Third, unclosed rings must be attached to the cell wall so that bending can overcome turgor pressure.